Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Her Story Collaborative. My name is Jen Buck, and I'm your host here in the collab. I'm a professional speaker, executive strategist, author of five books, and a nonprofit founder. My speaking and training business is focused on advocating, activating, and amplifying high performing women. And that's what the Her Story Collaborative is all about trailblazing women who are changing their little corner of the world. And this week's guest is, is, is doing exactly that. My next guest is Helen Rosenwade. She's a certified life coach and the owner of Love You Best Life Coaching. Helen is certified in life coaching, nutrition, hypnotherapy, and she provides her clients with a powerful set of tools and modalities that can assist them in their journey. She earned these certifications from Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. She also has acquired certification in reflexology, Qigong, and has done extensive training in cranial sacral work, which I love, by the way. Helen believes that to claim your desires or even dare to dream, one must have self-love. Learning to accept that you deserve to have those dreams fulfilled is a basic principle of lifelong acceptance. She knows we need to honor our inner child in order to be present, slow down, and embrace our true authentic self without judgment or scrutiny, but instead, alternatively, with love and admiration for all we have cultivated throughout this life. Helen is an earth-loving, tree-hugging, dirt worshiper who gets energized from being with Mother Nature, and she allows her inner child to be free. Spending time in nature with those she loves is an added bonus for her. So welcome to the collab, my friend. Thank you very much, Jen. That's very, very nice of you. Um, yeah. I'm honored to be here and I am a little bit nervous. So ah, yeah. we'll work through it. Yes, we will. And you know, I have to say just for all of those tuning in, Helen and I actually have a background. We, we have met each other through community work here in Arizona and she's somebody that I have grown to really, really like over the last year of working together. And so this is really cool for me too, to actually have a friend that's in the pod with me, you know, and, and spending a little bit of time on her Saturday. So thank you for that. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, like I said. Yeah. So I've got to jump right in and ask you about your coaching practice, because having a certification in life coaching, first of all, is an incredible thing because so many people these days are going out there and saying they're life coaches, but they haven't done the work. And I love that you have put the time in, uh, you went to Suiha to get your certifications done. And I want to know what brought you to the name of your business? Ah, well, like you said, in the intro, um, I feel like in order to live our true authentic selves and have our happiest life we can have for ourselves, it has to start with self-love, which starts with self-care. And while I was doing all of my own journey, I was like, if only I could just learn to love me like others mm -hmm. loved me. Yeah. And that was like, that's it. I've just got to love me best. Yes. So I named my company Love You Best because I think it is a powerful statement. And it's like, it is, it's like the oxygen mask on a plane. Yes. Taking care of you first so you can take care of others. And it just made sense to call it that. Yeah, I love it. And so do you bring in like Qigong and reflexology into the process in your coaching sessions? There, there are times where that can be applied. Um, COVID has made things a little bit challenging and difficult as far as getting together face to face one on one with clients a lot. It is like we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and I can do my hypnotherapy this way as well, as long as I can view that individual for cues. Yes. I couldn't just do it with blindly. You know, that would be very unethical, I think. Yes. Um, so I can bring other things into it as far as the way they work. Mm -hmm. Um actually doing them with other people uh, as far as like reflexology is really a touch. I got to mm. be there physically touching. Same with the cranial sacral work, which I sure. absolutely love. Doing. Yes. Uh, so I can introduce a lot of other things in, into it along with like the inner child work and all of that healing that comes along with that yeah. as well. I've had really, really great results from cranial sacral work mm. and it is magic. That's <laughs> all I can say. You know, it's, it, it is magic. And if I can just interrupt you for a second, yeah. the magic of it is your body doing its own healing. The, the, the facilitator, which is me, yeah. 
when I hold my positions, I do absolutely nothing other than ask my angels to, to, to come through my fingertips and yeah. heal in whatever way works best for that client. Yeah. And I do nothing. I just sit there and I let it happen. And your body does all the correction. I'm just giving it permission to do so. So yeah. that's the magic pill again. Love you best. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, I was in an accident. I was 24 years old and I, I was T-boned and I broke my sternum. And because of that, I had 20 years of really, really bad and, and severely debilitating back problems that would come up about every quarter. So about four times a year, sometimes so bad that I was in a wheelchair. I mean, it was bad, bad, bad. And I finally had, I guess, the allowance because I had heard of cranial sacral work. I had heard that, you know, this is something you should look at. But of course, I went with Western Med because I was you know, in that zone that so many people are. And do you know what ended up changing my body completely was the cranial sacral and along with another modality that is called Feldenkrais, like completely changed my body. I have never, ever, ever had another issue with my back, never. That is and amazing. that is insane, right? And so when I tell people to go, I just say, just go, just, I swear it's magic, just go, because it really is life-changing. It is, yeah. it is. I love working in it. Uh, my mentor was amazing with me when I was going through massage school. And um, that's where I learned most of my cranial work. And then of course, with my own facilitating of doing it, the more you do, the more intuitive you come. And these little babies have so many proprioceptors that they just feel everything, you know? And yeah, that's yeah, it is amazing. I I'm going to go back to Suiha and get my certification in that as well. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So I want to talk a little bit about about the inner child, because mm -hmm. I, like everyone, you know, have had lots of stories and feelings and valid experiences that happened to me that I found as an adult, I brought into my, you know, sort of adulting and, and living as, as a mature human. And those were constantly hiccups. You know, I would, I would find myself in the same predicaments over and over again. Right. Um, sure, because absolutely. I hadn't done the healing yet. And I am such a huge, huge um, proponent of doing that work. The work is so necessary for every single one of us what brought you into this space of, of wanting to really dive in and become a practitioner, a, a certified coach to help people with their inner child work? Well, I think it's because of my own past experiences. I had a very traumatic childhood mm. um, to a degree where I moved out of my parents' home at the age of 16. Wow. Literally out of fear that my mother would kill me one day wow. and I was just, I had too much to do in life. This could not be the way my life ends. Mm -hmm. So I had too much to do. I still have too much to do. And I was just going to be damned if I allowed those traumas to wreck my world. I yeah. just couldn't do it. I couldn't allow it. I felt like I was here for bigger things. There's no way I would have just dropped on this big blue ball for no reason, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And so m dealing with my vulnerabilities and uh, of my childhood is what made me think people need to hear this. People mm -hmm. need to know this can actually happen for them. Yeah. And I don't think enough people do know that. Yes. Um, I think that it's just, you know, we're told at a very young age, really grow up. Mm -hmm. Why are you acting so juvenile at your age? You know, that kind of thing. And yeah. so we do. And then we lose all our innocence and our purity and our playfulness and our curiosity and we lose it all yes if we give into that thought yes. I'm not saying there's a big difference between being childlike and being a child sure <laughs> you know? or childish yeah childish exactly mm -hmm. there's a big difference it's like I get involved all the time with my playfulness I, I literally go to a park every single day and on days when it's not 112 degrees outside, they yeah. have this really great big huge slide that's way up in the air. You got to climb up. Yeah. I'm not young, but I do it. And I slide down that slide and I love it. Oh, I love that. I play at the water parks. I do these things because I understand. Yes. Inside of me lives a dolphin that just wants to play all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I remember when my sister had her daughter and I was around her a lot and my niece. And I remember there was a point where she was getting to the phase where it wasn't little girl. Well, let me change that. It wasn't toddler play anymore. It was really more strategic play. Like, okay, here's the scene. You're going to be the so-and-so and and I'm going to be the so-and-so. Right. And I remember being like, what do I do? You know, here I am an adult. (laughs) How do I do this? Like I can play with Barbies all day long with her when she was a little, little one, but now she has a scene. And I remember feeling like, I don't, I don't know how to play. You know what I mean? Like there was this moment where I realized I had no idea how to do this. And I felt so silly the way that I was acting. Well, that was such a hit. And we ended up having so much fun that it became our thing. You know yes. what I mean? It became, yes. and, and I remembered how to play. And then when my second niece was born, it was like, I had this down, you know, it, but it literally took me time to get comfortable being really silly and, awesome. and carefree again, you know, that, that, that mm-hmm. carefree, that, that just a reckless abandon of fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is probably the biggest reason why this happens to us as adults? What do you think is really the crux of it? Well, we have to, we have to be responsible in life. So we can't separate those two things. It's like responsibility means this, Mm. and it's very tunnel vision. And I don't think we don't color outside the lines enough. Yeah. I think it is that in my opinion, I just, I see people who want to be that way and I'll just like, I'll be at a park again. I'll be at that park. Yeah. Yeah. And I will see adults looking at me like I am the strangest thing they have ever seen. But yeah, every child is flocking to me. Yes. Yes. That's it. And this is why I, children are my moonbeam, Jen. I'm telling you right now, I love children so much. And I've learned to love my inner child um, as much as I love a total stranger. Yeah. To me because I don't think I've ever really met a stranger but if I have to I don't know their name necessarily you know yes. so um yeah it's like coming into that finding that I love it I love it and you focus primarily on women and why is that your focus why and I of course I love that because the focus of my entire business is on women too right so why was that important to you it's important to me because I think women take on the burden of the world Oh, yes. You know, women, we, we have, no matter how many times we're knocked down, we're going to get back up. Um, and I'm not saying men don't do the same thing, but men are not interested in necessarily is healing the way women are because men are grown up to be men. Yes. You don't, men don't cry. Men don't share their feelings. Men don't, men don't, men don't. So yeah. already you're out of, you're already out of touch. Yeah. Women are like, maybe I can do that. It might take me a bit because women are not just throw your hands up in the air kind of gals. We've got to find a way to make it work. Right. We have so many obstacles and barriers and speed bumps and hiccups and all of those things in our life. But it doesn't matter whether we're sick, whether we're this, whether we're that, we've got to move forward. And that's what women just do. Women just do. And I think they forget who they really are. But I'm here to remind them they're perfect the way they are. All you need to do is find that laughter, that joy, that playfulness, that innocence, that curiosity. Yeah. I think Absolutely. women take, have too much on them and they forget to become or forget to um, remember, remember who they were. Yeah. Gosh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's just so totally in line with what. I had in that moment of awakening, you know, as a professional woman and I was out there running my own business and all of a sudden I have this little in fr- little kid in front of me and I was like, what, <laughs> how do I do this? You know, how do I not be the person that has it all together and has all this strength and all of that? And, and yet it became my favorite thing. You know, we were yeah. investigators. That was our thing. We were going on investigations. And so, that. yeah. And it, it then became for the other niece, what, what I said to her, let's go on an investigation. And it was me prompting it, you know, because I'd had so much fun with the older niece. And so it's just so funny um, to think that I had such a tough time with it, but I get it. 
because as women, we do take on the weight of the world. And, yeah. you know, this is also, it, it's ringing for me that what you do is, is tapping into the sacred feminine. You know, it's that feminine energy that wants to connect, wants to bond, wants to, to co-create. And, you know, the masculine, which by the way, I think there are seasons for masculine energy in, in everything also, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I, I have that natural drive. My my natural drive, I think, has been for a long time raised in a family with seven boys, the uh, only girl. Uh, and I, yeah. And so, by the way, I'm talking about one side of the family. I know I just said sister. Uh, she is my stepsister. But the point is, on this one side of the family, all the cousins and my brother, all boys. And so we were raised in the same community. And, um, you know, our moms are all sisters. So they always wanted us all together. Right. And I was, I think, naturally sort of created to lead with that masculine energy. And so yes, I've sure. always been competitive. I've always been a go-getter. I've always been the, the one to speak up. So I think that when I was getting into this phase with my sister having her girls, it was forcing me to tap into a space that I hadn't been used to in a long time. And it was that, that sacred feminine, you know, of bonding, connecting, letting the world stop and creating intimacy and I was afraid to slow down enough mm. to allow that, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you'll get you'll get steamrolled over if you if you do in, mm. in that mindset, right? Yes. In that maybe masculine mindset is I don't know yeah. if that's yeah. the proper way to say that, but yeah. you know, that is the, the the leader. But so yes, you you've found a way to combine that feminine and that leadership mm -hmm. um, together in a beautiful harmony. Yeah. And it's allowed you to do this platform for people like me and all the other empowering women that are out there, you know? Yeah. So thank you again for that. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you. So what would you say to women if they're, if they're struggling with this, how do we move forward? Like, what's the answer to this? Where do we go with this? Because I think that there are a lot of women listening that are going to go, um, yep, that's me. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think there will be a lot of women who can pinpoint a lot of things that go, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I tell, I like to tell pretty much anybody who will listen, <laughs> but it is mostly women. Um, yeah. Excuse me again. <clears throat> that if you don't know how to move forward, like if if you would have came to me a while back and said, I have no idea how to play with my niece, mm -hmm. you know, I would have said, listen, you follow her lead. If you mm -hmm. want to know how to act like a child, watch a child play, yeah. play hide and seek with them, mm -hmm. figure out how their little minds work, you know, ask, yeah. ask questions that are intriguing. Um, you know, moving forward is just about that one step in front of the other. You're not going to see a child run from one end of the room to the other in one leap. Right. They're going to take those steps and they're going to struggle and Maybe they'll trip over some piece of lint on the floor like I used to do, but yeah, you know, yeah. And they get to the other end of the room successfully. Yeah. And all they did was take one step at a time. And that would be my best advice for people. Nice. Do not try to take on too much at a time because it's overwhelming. Think, oh, I'm just no good at this because look, I failed there. Yeah. Well, you tried to do five steps in one. So right. One step right. at a time. Because everything is about the first step. If you complete that step, the next step is the first step. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I feel so strongly about having that person to bounce things off of, you know, I've, I've actually got an appointment tomorrow uh, with a coach to deal with some of my personal stuff, you know, um, because I, I just don't have all the answers, you know, and I, I need someone to bounce these things off of and make sure that I'm seeing this fully and, and, and getting it. And I think that We've all been so programmed to think that therapy bad, you know, counseling bad, and that stigma has to be broken. And what I love is that there are other options so that if you don't have insurance or maybe therapy and, in, in, you know, is outside of, of the realm of what you can afford or whatever it might be, or maybe you don't have insurance, I mean, whatever. Yeah. I love that there are different ways to do it. And that's what I love about having a coach because it's so niched. You know, it's not just family therapy. It's right. so niched when you deal with coaches. And that's something that for me is super valuable so that I know exactly who to call when I need it. 
you know, and like I said, I've got an appointment tomorrow uh, with a friend of mine who I've had on the podcast before, as a matter of fact, she's phenomenal. And so Corey Stefanik, I will just call her out because she's incredible. Yep. (laughs) And, um, but I, I think that it's important for people to realize that coaching is great. It's, it's, active. It's about growth. It's about, you know, zeroing in on, on what, you know, people need. So what do you love about your job? Oh, so so many things. I think what I love most is empowering people when that light bulb comes on and they have what Oprah says is the aha moment. Yeah. You know, when they're like, Oh my God, really? Yeah. I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, do whatever you want because you're a grown woman. <laughs> you yeah. Have an option, you know? um, so yeah, it's I think uh, what I love most about it is that I get an opportunity for people to see themselves through the eyes of another. Yes. You know, yes. that I think most of us would really love to be able to see ourselves through somebody else's eyes because we would really see us in a different light, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I, that's what I think I love most about it is being able to show them that. Love it. I love it. Yay. And I just know your heart. So I know you're so authentic and so totally in and it's just fabulous. And in fact, what I like to do so that people can get like another view of your heart, if you will, is I like to ask my guests these speed round questions and I'd love to throw them at you and you can just give me whatever comes to mind, you know, however you feel in the moment, just give me your answer. And and I've got 10 questions. Is that cool? That's cool. Awesome. Speed round. Speed round. Okay. That's right. Wet your whistle, my friend. Okay. Here we go. First question. If you got to spend an hour on a park bench with any woman from history, who would you spend that hour with? Maya Angelou. Ah, it's the number one answer in the collab. Number one. Yep. Maya is an amazing, she was a forward thinker, her heart, her heart. I, I resonate with people who you can see inside of them. One hundred by hearing something they say or looking at them. She's yep. such an inspiration. I love yep. her. She is. She's a true North for sure. Was, yeah. yeah, for sure, sure. What's your favorite place that you've ever traveled to? Italy. Oh, yes. And Italy. you're the Italian. So yeah, this yeah. makes sense too. Yes. It's top it's of beautiful. my bucket list. Very top. Yeah, you got to go. You got to yeah. go. Yep. 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 It won't it, disappoint. Oh, I, I know it won't. I know. So if you were given a million bucks right now and you had to donate it to a charity, where would you donate that money? Oh my, if I only had one charity to give it to, I would have to say it would be to, oh, the Danny Thomas. Uh, gosh, it's, why is that deceiving me? Uh, Danny Thomas Foundation. It's Oh my goodness. How is this happening? Oh, his, his wife, they have the, the commercials on with the kids. Um, it's a children's hospital. Yes, it is a children's hospital. Yes. I can't think of that. Oh, wow. That's embarrassing. Yep. Children's embarrassing. hospital. No, that's all right. No, okay. no, no, listen. So that, because they're just so gracious to, to all of the, nobody pays for stuff there. I mean, yep. The, everything is based on donations and just yep. to set the record straight. There's no way my, my wife would ever allow me to just, <laughs> she'll be in control of that. Cause she said, I'll give it all away. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite book or podcast? Favorite book is, ah, she who remembers. Mm, okay. I've never heard of that one. I'll look it up. I always tend to write these down at the end of the podcast webcast so that I can, I can you know, check them out myself. So good to yeah. know. She who remembers. Yeah. What's Excellent a look. what's a quirky or wacky fact about you that many people may not know? <laughs> well, anybody who knows me knows I'm into tie dye, so it can't be that one. A quirky fact about me: Ah, I like watching soap operas. <gasps> Stop and a, it! And I'm a and I'm a closet Barry Manilow fan. Oh, <laughs> I saw Barry. This. I saw Barry. I am too. And it's not closeted. I am so out and proud about my love for Barry. And I saw him in Vegas and I bawled like a baby. It was one of those like extraordinary concerts and oh, life changing. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Next question. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be invisible, but now I don't want to be invisible. Now my superpower would be a rewind. If I could rewind. Oh yeah. A little bit. Okay. So not my whole life. Yeah. Just like something comes out of your mouth and you forget, like when I couldn't remember Danny Thomas's foundation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Got it. Rewind so I could. 
That's a good one. That's a good one. So what's your most treasured item that you own? I don't own treasured items. I don't, um, I, I will have, what's your most treasured item that you have? Probably my musical instruments. Okay. I have a plethora of them and I don't play many of them. Okay. Like I have a saxophone back here. I yeah. don't play it, but it sure looks pretty. Yeah, they are. Instruments are pretty, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. And I just, I did pick up the bass during uh, COVID. So I played bass guitar and ukulele. I just bought a ukulele. That's cool. So. That's really cool. Okay. What is one big thing that you want to accomplish before you're done here? Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I would like to be able to have people see themselves through others' eyes so that they know that they're perfectly exactly the way they are. Um, we all do the best we can with what we have in the moment. So yeah. I wish people would know that more. And I love it. Yeah. I just wish people could see themselves like others. I love that. And on that note, I know people are going to want to find you. Can mm. you tell people where they can connect with you? Yeah, I have a website. Uh, it's called Love You Best. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Love You Best Life Code. There's also a new platform out there that I've recently gotten onto. It's called Dow Cloud. However, Dow Cloud has now changed to heal.me. Oh. And they can find me there as well. Um, I have my Facebook page is also, um, you can find me, love you best, Lynn Rose and Wade Life Coach there as well. Um, yeah, so those are the four platforms you could really find me on. And are you um, .com, loveyoubest.com? Yes. Awesome. Okay, good. Well, Helen, I have loved this. And I'm just so grateful that you spent some time with me. And I know it goes fast, right? It did. It goes fast. I told you. <laughs> yeah, you were wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, it goes really quickly. Before we close this up, though, I want to make sure that I give a nod to our sponsor, 100 Angels. 100 Angels is transforming communities through service, education, healthcare, and they provide comfort to populations who are financially impacted. And whether this is through water, comfort toys, uh, making sure that they have access to attorneys, doctors, um, you know, medication, whatever that is, they are absolutely extraordinary and they are helping people all over the world. And so you can find 100 Angels at 100angels.org. And I'm just so grateful that they are the sponsor of this show. And Helen, I am so grateful that you spent time with me. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate you making it smooth sailing. <laughs> yay. Yay. Yes, it was. And for everybody who's tuning in, thanks for being here. You know, I drop these every single Monday. So uh, we will see you on the next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jen.